This is a continuation of testing all 122 effects that come with the shader filter plugin for OBS Studio. You are currently watching part two. If you haven't seen part one yet, go, go watch it, go watch it. But with that being said, let's jump right into it. All right, let's pick it back up exactly where we left it in the other video. And we're gonna go with opacity. Let me turn it on. And this one, as the name implies, just regulates the opacity. You can make it more transparent. So if you're looking for like a quick way to make your source more transparent, you can just use opacity. Keep in mind that the color correction filter that comes with OBS also has an opacity slider, which is what I usually use. Page pill, and it's basically a page pill effect. <laughs> You can control the speed. Also flash warning if you haven't seen the first one. You can set the position, but since it's moving around, there it is. Cool little 3D effect. You can probably find a way to make it a transition. Perlin noise. This is basically a fractal noise generator. And you have a couple of options on controlling the contrast, the amount of noise. We can apply it to the channel, which gives us some sort of misty kind of look. You can invert it. As you can see here, you can see that it's gray on the preview. That means that it's affecting the, the alpha channel. So if we have something underneath our source, that's what's gonna show underneath it. Iteration, you can basically control the size here, I would say, or the detail. But yeah, that's Perlin Noise. Pie chart, <laughs> just kind of a funny one. But yeah, you have a pie chart that you can control. You can select each color for each uh, side, basically, like that, boom. You have start angle, outer radius, inner radius, and then a slider for each part basically how much each part is gonna take. As you can see, it comes with 10 parts. Pixelation, as the name implies, it pixelates your image, but you also get the doodle effect integrated in that one, which is kind of cool. We can turn it off, of course, and uh, you can play around with the percentage or basically the pixel size. Quite nice. But yeah, very interesting that the doodle effect is integrated in this one. Pretty interesting effect. So keep in mind, pixelation.effect, that's what we just tested. And then there's pixelation.shader, which is a little bit different. Well, quite different actually, because we have the target width, so you control the pixelation on the width and also the height. So you can have it be very pixelated on the height, but not so much on the width, have more detail on the width. And this is giving you like pretty interesting effects. You can do the opposite. There you go. This is kind of like a glass window type of effect. Then we have pulse. It might not be that visible, but it's pulsating right now. And you can make uh, max pixels like that. Okay, cool. You can have minimum. Usually you want a huge difference between both to have an extreme effect like this. I like it. Play around with the speed also. It's good for like music. <laughs> rainbow, as the name implies, is just a rainbow effect where you can control the saturation, luminosity, speed right there, but also the spread. Spread is basically how many colors you can see at once and how much it, the gradients is the gradient is affecting it. See like that, let me lower the speed a little bit. And as you can see, rotational makes it rotate. When you don't have it, it's just right to left. It's vertical, so down to up. And does the rotation offset actually work this time? You can apply it to your image, so you get that type of effect. You can also click on replace image color, so you will be able to see your highlights, stuff like that. You can also apply it to a specific color. Uh, in this case, like pure white. We're gonna probably select our blue here. Let me pick like that, so my lights are gonna have it. There you go, that's a pretty interesting effect. Rain window, I love this. Look at that, look at that. And of course you can customize it. Uh, you have the blur radius, just how blurry you want it to be. Raindrop size, tail strength, it can be very, very powerful. <laughs> tail color, if you want it to be light, bring it all the way down, and if you want it to be way darker, and then there's speed, of course. With the right settings, it can look pretty realistic, which I love. I know a lot of you use like the blur, the typical blur for intros and stuff like that. This would probably be way more interesting to look at. Next one is rectangular drop shadow. So let me pull up something with some alpha channel. Let's go with that YouTube logo to remind you to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Rectangular drop shadow. We can see the effect already, but it's uh, basically too much. So let's play around with it. So we can offset it on the Y and X axis, and then we can blur it. There you go. Definitely kind of weird. It basically creates a drop shadow that is just a rectangle. I don't see myself using this at all. Remove partial pixels. Remove partial pixels. This one says excellent for cleaning green screen. So it works well with something that has transparency. If I pull it to the right, you can barely see it, but it's basically, it's eating up the pixels. It's basically contracting it, the selection, the alpha channel, so that if you have some green pixels that are still on your key, it can basically get rid of them. So I'm moving it like this and you might be able to see it. You're gonna have alpha, which is basically transparency. Then you're gonna have copies. 
Then you have repeat texture. It's kind of different, but basically you can choose an image or a source as an image and you can overlay it on your main source as a texture and you can still play with the amount of copies. RGB color wheel. This is what you get. Actually, the speed is a lot. Color depth is basically saturation, if you will. You can apply it to your image. You can have that kind of uh, effect. You can also move the center here. There you go. Place it wherever you want. Just like before, you can replace the image color. There you go. Highlights, shadows are the same, but uh, the colors are different. In this case, I would want the color depth to be maximum. <laughs> we have color everywhere. And then we can apply that to a specific color. There we go. RGB split. So it basically separates the red, green, and blue layers to have that type of effect. And you have full control over each layer, which is pretty cool. Even both on the X and Y axis to really have the effect that you want. I like that. RGB visibility. I would classify this probably as a color correction tool, but you can basically play around with which channel you want to be more visible. Red, green, blue. Play around it as much as you want. Ripple is going to be a water ripple-ish effect. You have distance factor. There you go. How tiny you want the ripples, basically. Time factor and then power factor. <laughs> and of course, you can play around with the center. You can place it wherever you want. Rotato. And this is like a skew stretch rotating animated effect. We have control over a lot of it. Angle, degrees, the axis. <laughs> Rotate colors. It also plays with the hue at the same time. Not bad. Rounded rectangle. I believe we saw that one before. So you can see the corners over there. And then you have a border that you can add. Pretty easy way to have like a rounded corner on your camera overlay, for example, like on your just on your camera. Then there's rounded rectangle per corner. This one is different. When you pull it like this, you can pick exactly which which corner you want to be rounded. For example, if you want to make that type of effect, okay, where two of them are rounded and not the others, that's decent. Border thickness is towards the middle now, so you can do this. Cool. Then there's rounded rectangle per side. <laughs> also different. Believe it or not, you can pull this one. I'm not exactly sure how it works. I'm just I just remember being like, OK, I'm probably not going to use this one. Border thickness towards the middle again, slightly different. And then there's alpha, there's alpha cut off. So you can control sort of a gradient with the border. Not bad. And finally, rounded rectangle too. a little bit simpler. Corner radius, border thickness, boom, boom, easy clap. Rounded stroke, corner radius. Pretty similar. And then rounded stroke a gradient. There's a lot of those, okay? Apparently that's a big thing. But here you can have like a gradient, uh, which is pretty nice. And you can also animate it. Rotation speed. You can see that now I'm going to have my gradient going around. I should probably have a better color so you can really see it like this. There we go. So it's cool that you can just animate this directly from one single filter. All right. Scan line. This is kind of like a... I don't know, old TV maybe effect, um, CCTV effect, probably. You can play around with the period, which is the amount of lines, basically. The floor is pretty much the transparency of the line. Turn off shift to make it darker, and then you can animate it with the speed, and it will basically go up like that. And then there's Seascape. Get ready. <laughs> this is so impressive. This is so, so, so impressive. It generates the C and you can play around with like the C height. You can make it really big. This one, I wouldn't recommend you, <laughs> you use it during a stream or something. You can generate like how choppy it is. So you can make it pretty smooth. This just looks like liquid foam in a way. Or you can make it very choppy. You can play around with the speed. Very turbulent. But of course, you like it when it's chill. And then see frequency, basically just how much we can see or the size of the waves, if you will. You can play around with the colors if you want this to not look natural anymore. Let's go with purple. That way. <laughs> and then there's camera speed. There's camera turn speed. Let's go wild. Oh my. Oh my. Don't turn. Stop turning. There you go. Then we have seasick. Oh God, that's too much. Wait, why am I having... What is happening? Wait, this is not normal. So this is basically what the effect is supposed to look like. Hence the name seasick. Selective color. This is like a leaf color. So for example, I'm showing green right now. I don't like the color green. So there's no green <laughs> in my setup at all. We can turn it off. We're not going to see any change. But if I show blue, for example, which there's a lot of it, 
you're gonna see all the blue but my skin is not blue because i have a perfectly balanced color here uh, if i wanted to show my skin for example i would probably click show red and that didn't work cool 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 cool, cool. <laughs> so in that case you can play around with the cutoff so cut off red if i do this i can bring back okay this looks weird like that but you get you get the point okay anything that's not blue is not being shown and you can play around with the values as much as you want but i like it you can do maybe like some sort of reverse sin city or you can also change the background type so everything that's gray you can make it go black for example oh my oh my <laughs> shake is going to shake your source like this again minimum maximum you can turn off the warble and then nothing happens you can bump up the speed shakes a lot then there's random scale <laughs> shine this one is a little animation basically that will pop up from time to time kind of like the bloom but it i don't know it plays on the highlights a little bit and then it stops you can choose a specific pattern for it by choosing an image but i just chose this so it would look a little bit more natural there you go that's the effect right there shine and then you can play around with like reverse you can make a glitch i wouldn't recommend that <laughs> You can also apply it to your alpha layer. I'm guessing it would make it uh, transparent. But yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool effect. Simple gradient. It's basically a animated gradient. You can play around with the alpha percentage right here. Turn off lens flare. When you turn on lens flare, you're gonna get like some white. You can animate the lens flare, I guess. It's gonna move around. Apply to alpha layer. Apply to specific color. There we go. <laughs> it's very visible. But yeah, this is a simpler gradient than the, the RGBs that we saw. Simplex noise. This is another uh, noise texture generator. We have snap percent, speed percent, resolution. Resolution is always like the detail, basically. If you want fine grain or big clouds, you can make it fractal. Fractal is already going to give it more texture, usually. Use alpha layer. Whoa. Okay, that's trippy. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. But yeah, you can also change the color. Pretty nice. Look like a T1000. Spotlight, which is one that I really, really love. Let me play with the speed a little bit. So yeah, it's just a spotlight. It's like that. You can also make it glitch. Don't recommend it. Focus percent. I'm guessing it's like how much gradient you have. Yeah. Do you want a tiny spotlight? But this is a pretty cool effect. Might be distracting for like a camera, but for anything else, it's great that we have it. You can also play around with the offset, but there we go swirl <laughs> it swirls it just swells swells swirls you can also keep it steady and then you can play around with it woo woo thermal which is not bad i uh, can play around with the strength <laughs> it's pretty cool uh, it seems to just be taking the highlights so anything that's white is gonna be uh red for example if i use the flashlight on my phone it should turn red <laughs> exactly when we use flashlight, flashlight turn red. TV CRT sub pixel. I'm not sure this one needs an explanation, but basically, yeah, when you look at a CRT TV, uh, you could see the pixels. A lot of people don't even know what a CRT TV is, but you can control the, the height, the width, the gaps, big gaps. There we go. Oh, this is actually particular. This is pretty cool. Twist, didn't we? Oh yeah, we saw a swirl. This is twist. <laughs> So you can play around with where you want it to be. You can play with the power, just how much it's affecting just your eyes, for example, and how much rotation. Do I look good like that? Then we have two pass drop shadow. Let's add that to a transparent layer like that. And of course, we're going to offset the shadow. Nice shadow blur size or it change the color. Cool. This looks like a more natural drop shadow right there. Then we have VCR. So old VCR or broken VCR at this point. Very bad VCR would play your cassettes, your VHS tapes like that. You can play around with the distortion, the vertical shift, oh God, the vignette, the stripe and everything. Then we have VHS. That is a bad camera quality that records straight to VHS, I would say. Play around with the wave size, the offset intensity. It's actually, this is pretty real. You can, if you play around with it, you can get pretty realistic results. There's noise, color offset. <laughs> Replace image color. Not bad. Not bad. I, I really like this look. Vignetting is what I usually use on my camera. I just like the effect. Yeah, you have inner radius, outer radius. It actually brightens the middle. Doesn't look like it. And also the dark parts are actually your alpha channel. 
So keep that in mind. So if I do this and I do that, you can see that the middle is actually, there's, I don't know, the contrast is higher. Voronoi pixelation, which is that kind of pixelation, basically. <laughs> you can still censor stuff, but it doesn't look, doesn't have to look like a bunch of squares. Play around with the size. Then we have zigzag, animate, there we go. Bump up the amplitude. You can play with the radius phase. We can also animate time. And yeah, this is it. This is it. <laughs> then we have zoom. It's just a zoom. It's just a zoom. And then you can center it the way you want. If you want to zoom on something else, that could be cool. You can just turn this on and off to do the zoom effect. And then finally, we have zoom blur, which is it's basically a radio blur, but it's uh, it's zoom. There you go. Magnitude, a lot, samples, a lot, and then speed. Come on, animate, do it. Wait, what? And then glitch. <laughs> and this was part two and the final part of testing every single effect that comes with the shader filter plugin. There will be a link in the description if you would like to try it for yourself. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss videos like this in the future and uh, follow me on Twitch. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Go out there, make me proud, get level, out.